You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Welcome, everyone, to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul, and feeling a lot better than the last time you heard me on the show. Yeah, I got a little more color, which is good. <laughs> it's um, always good. I'm liking that. This is episode number 413. I'm Rob. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Yes, we really do. Now I'm worried what I looked like when we were recording last time, Rob. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just the uh, the smile that you have now oh. versus what you had before. Gotcha. Well, yeah, being sick, it, it's funny. After 107, I just kind of felt like I had crashed. You know, like uh, I we'd been working day and night for it seemed like six weeks. I hadn't taken a day off, and it seemed like six weeks. And I just kind of... Yeah, our bodies are going to self-regulate ultimately, right? They're going to mm-hmm. tell us, look, you're done. Yeah. You might think... <laughs> You're going to get more work out of me, but no, you're not. You're done. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what happened to you, and you've been able to get a little bit of rest. Yes. Basically slept for a day. Pretty much. So that's, that's exactly good. what I did. Very um, glad you're back to your old self. Yes. I'm ba- glad to be back here. Glad to be back answering your questions. Uh, recently, I was actually on another podcast called the New Focus Financial Podcast, talking about the economic effect of drones. Cool. That was a lot of fun. I bet. Uh, did that yesterday. So. When will that air so everybody I think listen. it actually aired either yesterday or today. I oh, can't remember. Oh, okay. So they so. do it like us, like boom, boom. Boom, boom. Oh, yeah. They do a lot of shows. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, but if you have a question, be sure to go to askdroneu.com. Uh, and if you're thinking about taking the test for the 107, make sure to check out DroneU. It's only 40 $7 a month. You can get the study guide. You can get quiz questions, test questions, prepare yourself. But that is not going to get you to pass the exam. You've got to thoroughly understand the concepts and material that really is the foundation of the test itself. That's why we were, we recorded our class, which isn't quite available just yet, but it will be soon. Uh, and you can download that for an extra cost. But Or you can just go to the class itself and attend via the live stream. And the next class will be, Rob? The next class, drum roll, October 8th and 9th in Uh, Denver, Colorado. Oh, it's in Denver. I just wrote on Instagram, I was in Dallas. Oopsies. Nope, Denver, (laughs) then Dallas, then Phoenix. DDP. Gotcha. That's right. All right. I'll, uh, <laughs> DDP. I'll re- <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, but there are many ways to consume the content. If you're not a member of DroneU, though, highly recommend it. In fact, I posted a picture of all the comments in the community, and people were like, where is this? I want to get in on this community. You can do so if you go to thedroneu.com and become a member. But before we waste too much of your time, before we make your morning or afternoon too boring, let's get right into today's question, which is really going to be focusing on tips and tricks and some hacks on forming the right habits for getting beautiful, buttery smooth footage. <laughs> I know Tim doesn't like it when I say that, but I love saying buttery smooth. Yeah, it kind of has a nice flow to the words. Well, whenever I've talked to Hollywood producers and I say, you know what, what I can do is I can create cinematic motion. It's a story and a narrative from start to finish by moving the camera and articulating it in an absolutely buttery smooth way so that you cannot see any side to side motion whatsoever. It is Seamless. And so guys, like, there's your template. <laughs> there's your script. <laughs> <laughs> and every time they're like, yeah, I know what you mean by seamless. I know what you mean by camera jerking back and forth. So, But that buttery smooth thing, Paul, we're not quite sure what you mean. Is that, no, they know what you mean there too? I, I think people understand what I mean by buttery smooth. I think smooth. they do too. I, think. I was just watching the news the other day and they were showing some drone footage of some, some unfortunate circumstances at the bottom line, but the drone footage was absolutely horrendous. Oh, weird. No, it, <laughs> I was just beside myself that there's got to be better pilots out there. And if that's a pilot that's on staff with this agency, get that person some training. It was horrible. <laughs> it literally detracted from actually seeing what they were trying to show you. Well, you know, I think this is I think this is uh, one of the issues that we, we talked about this in the drone you community. But if you're good at getting business, you're good at marketing yourself, you're good at advertising yourself, you can pick up drone jobs very quickly. The The need is there. With 107, everything is cleared up, so there are opportunities abound. I mean, literally, yeah. they're everywhere. Um, but if you can't fly well, that client's not going to come back to you. No, if that they're client not. doesn't come back to you, your business is going to have a very short lifespan. But remember, this was all forecasted last year. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to see exactly just that. People are going to get engulfed in the, I'm just going to do job after job after job. They're not focusing on the quality or the service. And they're going to fall off 
just like a river on a cliff. Just like it. Ooh. Otherwise known as a waterfall. That's right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's get to today's question. So remember, focus on your flying skills, whether you have jobs or not. I'm booked up for the next weeks, weeks and weeks, but I've got to get some flying in because if I don't fly, that literally I will lose it. So Yeah, you definitely have to stay sharp for <clears throat> sure. All right. Question. This is Les from Suwanee, Georgia. I have a quick question regarding flight speed when you're doing videography work. I want to make sure that I'm getting the best uh, and smoothest, as I think um, Paul once said, uh, you want to have buttery smooth movements. I want to make sure that I get the best uh, movements when I'm panning and when I'm um, doing my reveals. So my question is, how fast should I be flying my drone when I'm doing these movements? Should I be going slow? Uh, should I be going at a pretty good speed uh, and slow it down and post? Or should I, um, does the shutter speed or the frames per second matter? Should I be shooting these at 30 or maybe 1080p, 60? Um, so to how fast should I be flying to have a really good uh, presentation? Thanks. You guys are doing a great job. Love the uh, podcast. Love the community. Uh, you guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Good question. It is a good question. It's a thorough question. He touches on a lot of the different variables that are important in exactly what he's trying to do. Yes. And I think that there's kind of a systematic way to kind of answer this question. So I'm going to try and do my best to do just that. Cool. Um, Depending on the final look of the footage, that's going to determine really how you fly. Um, now, for me, Rob, whenever I'm trying to focus on a scene or how I'm going to show the story, I'm really focused on the outcome of the shot itself, uh, on okay. the look. Do I want a nice, slow upper reveal? And by the way, all of this stuff is um, in our new advanced uh, aerial videography course, free for members. Um, but anyway... Going back to it, if you want a nice, smooth, tilting reveal up to the house, and then we see the house, and the smoothness of the reveal is so soft that once it stops, you don't even notice it stop, mm -hmm. um, you know, that would probably be a slower flight. But when I'm flying, because I've been flying for so long, and I went through this process of uh, flying and reviewing footage, flying and reviewing footage... So now I kind of have this innate sense of how much I move my thumbs will articulate the speed. Sure. But when I'm flying, I'm not looking at the telemetry to like see, okay, I got to go 10 miles an hour here, you know, um, or I want to speed ramp this shot from 40 seconds to four. So I'm going to fly it really, really, really slow and reveal really, really slow. And the final outcome will be literally a four second, very quick speed ramp. It really just depends, you know, what are you going after? Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I'm not looking at the telemetry. I just want to back up. Not looking at telemetry. I'm really flying for the feel. I'm flying exactly. in, in FPV. You know, so it, it's it's not of looking down. It's what do I want to get? How do I need to fly like that? And then trusting my senses because I've been practicing in taking these shots and right. then watching the footage. Which, if you just go out and fly and you never watch the footage after you've flown, you'll never hone in and fine tune and work out these little details like some shake from le left to right or uh, maybe the last minute you tilted up too fast or you tilted the camera up too much and uh, it was a little obvious. You know, all these little problems have to be mitigated over time in practice. Which ironically, some of those little issues that you just um, alluded to, as you start to get better and you do have primarily smooth footage, when you have that little kink, it's going to be that much more noticeable. Oh, yeah. So you're getting better, but you got to get all the way better, so to speak. Definitely. And I think that there is definitely a system in which that you can start um, to try and achieve smooth footage and then move forward. And the way to start is simply by going really, really slow. Mm -hmm. I mean, just moving the sticks as slow as you possibly can and just getting to a point where you can, you know, tilt the camera at a certain speed. You can yaw at a certain speed and maintain the speed. The key is consistency here. It's not about a quick tilt and then a fast jerk up and down. It's about a consistent speed. And in order to do that, you've got to practice where can you set your settings and your stick movements to get that consistent speed. Now for me, I've slowed down my tilt wheel speed with the Inspire One X3 to 30 
and with the X5 to 50. Mm. That's my gimbal wheel speed settings. Okay. Um, and when I'm moving that tilt wheel, you know, I'm just holding the tilt wheel and then I'm pressing my finger against the remote itself to keep that consistent speed. It's like locking my finger in place almost. Right. So when we're moving the drone forward as well, I've remembered, you know, just how fast the footage is going to look depending on how I move. But for you guys, because you won't have that because you haven't been flying for a long time, it's really important to start out really slow and do the same pass over and over and over again because you're going to learn through that practice at what speed do things look really nice. And for me, since we don't have 4K 60 yet and I'm really not a fan of the 1080 60, I shoot 4K 30 and I do a lot of my complex maneuvers extremely slowly which so you I, have to because of that 30 exactly because yeah. we're shooting through at 30 frames per second well what that does is it allows me to speed the footage up now it's very difficult to speed ramp footage slower when you're shooting only 30 frames per second can okay. you do it yes you can I believe Twixter is the plugin for Final Cut Pro that we use um, and then you speed it back up to normal. You can even speed it up, but you know, really slowing down 4K 30 footage is not going to look good. Um, have we done it? Yes. Does it look great? Not really. Um, that being said, when we're doing this slow movement and we speed ramp up, we can speed through it, mm -hmm. or we can start normal speed and then speed up and go back to normal. Mm -hmm. So. Again, what are you trying to get out of the shot? How, how do you want to shoot this? How do you want to make it look? What I've learned is that when I shoot 4K 30 and every single shot is really slow, I have the most flexibility in a perfect world. I would love 4K 60 because I could ramp it up, I could ramp it down, and as long as I still had nice, slow, smooth movements, I would have the flexibility to ramp up or down. Sure. All right, that makes so, a lot of sense. Starting slow, progressing, practicing those movements, watching the footage after each mm -hmm. pass, kind of getting that speed in your fingers, you know, understanding, you know, what you want that that look to achieve. And then after a while, Rob, you're going to realize that the faster speeds with slower tilts, so you're covering more area, but you're tilting the camera really slow, look really cool. But you've got to be traveling at you know, 25, 30 miles an hour to achieve that look. Mm -hmm. You're not going to achieve that look as a beginner. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, so uh, definitely a couple of things that, that I'm hearing here that, that I want to bring to light maybe a little bit more. One is planning out your shot. Mm -hmm. And really, really thinking about what, and you've said this, but I just kind of want to bring attention to it, spending a little bit of time understanding what your end result needs to be, what it needs to be for the client, or if it's a creative process, what you hope it to be, because you're planning all those speeds and FPS and all that stuff based on what that end product needs to look like. That's true. Correct. And then beyond that, it's, uh, it's exactly what you're saying. Folks have just got to keep practicing. And I hadn't really thought about what you said about watching that footage, but that's a really important part of anybody's sort of practice time. Yeah, it's not just flying. You know, yeah. you can make the bird look really cool in the sky, but your footage is going to suck. Right. And then if you can get to that point where you're talking about of 20, 25 miles per hour and moving the camera slowly, what's so cool about being able to do that is what you're like 98th percentile, 95th percentile, because so few people can do that and do it well. That is your goal, as far as I'm concerned, is yeah. to get to that level. Well, and see, when you can get to that level, you have more flexibility on like windy days, right? When, the, yeah. when we were up in Colorado, and there was a 35 mile an hour gust, 20 mile hour sustained wind, I flew straight into the wind for about a half a mile, and just let the camera and the bird itself float back towards us, utilizing the app and the sticks themselves to control the camera. And we got these gorgeous sweeping views mm -hmm. in horrible conditions. Yeah. So it's, it, yes. You remember, though, you know, your experience and your level of risk have to be somewhat on the same plane sure. or the same field, because if you've got too much risk and not enough experience, things can go bad very quickly. Right. Absolutely. And, but, and keep in mind, guys, that as you're putting together your demo reels, <coughs> so are hundreds, if not thousands of other people. And so you're just going to have to work that much harder because most demo reels are going to be pretty straightforward. They're going to be kind of straight shots in, yeah. going up and those kinds of things. And so you're going to have to learn to do some of these more complicated moves to set yourself apart. Well, I think there's another level on top of the, you know, super fast, long camera movements. 
and I'm not sure this one would you know qualify for the FA. But like you talked before, when you're going there, you're making a plan. You're looking at where do I want to fly, what movements mm-hmm. do I want to do. We've been saying that for two years. Right now, it's FA law that you have to do that. There you go. <laughs> so uh, definitely a part of your pre-flight inspection and an important part as well. You know that being said, when we are flying and we're we're doing these movements, the next level is through obstacles, and I'm not really sure that would be okay with the FAA. I, I think it would as long as, you know, it didn't cause undue harm to persons or property on the ground or aircraft in the sky. Yeah. No I, one's around. So. I don't think they care if you're willing to crash your drone into a fence or yeah. <laughs> whatever. As long as it doesn't cause more than $500 in damage. Because then you don't then have you to report, report it. it. <laughs> Gosh, I know these laws well. That's funny. <laughs> uh, oh, anyways, man. thank you for the question, Les. Good one. Uh, we've got actually a few questions in from Les, so we're kind of sprinkling them in here. What I like about Les's questions, if you don't mind me saying this, Les, is they're a little bit more beginner, which is great because there's a lot of beginners out there. And though, Paul, we may have touched on some of these issues in past episodes, I think a lot of this is good to come back to and and readdress and maybe look at it in different ways. Yeah, definitely. Also, guys, really excited about an upcoming episode of Ask a Drone You. We've got the FAA coming on the show. We've got the AMA coming on the show. And we're going to let them debate it out. What is hobby? What is commercial? To me, this doesn't really seem difficult. Uh, And also with the barrier to entry so low, I'm kind of shocked that more people don't want to just go out and get a 107, especially with what it provides to you. But we are going to... We're going to ask the difficult questions. We're going to talk about FPV racing. We're going to talk about hobbyist flights because, you know, let's say you're at the beach, you're just with your family, you're shooting a video, but you're flying near people. Are you following the community set of guidelines? Mm -hmm. Could you be fined in that situation? So many questions, so many answers, but we're looking to deliver all of them to you. If you have a question you want to ask either of them, just send it to us. Support at the Drone U. We would love to get some more questions for this, guys. It's going to be a fun episode. Yeah, this is one of the few times that we're going to tell you to go ahead and email your questions in because we'll develop a list. Definitely. Rather than trying to ha- play a bunch of them. Definitely. So, Anyway, guys, well, that is going to do it for us today. Don't forget, if you have a question, ask Drone You. And if this podcast has ever helped you out or the information has ever become valuable, please share it with a friend or leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you want to become one of the best, you want to gain the competitive advantage and become a part of an amazing online community of drone pilots like yourself, then go to thedroneu.com and become a part of an ever-growing, ever-awesome community. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed, Rob. <laughs> That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.